Multipass rendering is a technique for separating the various passes that make up a 3D rendering from one another. The name comes from the fact that each of these layers is designated as a rendering pass. Consider a simple 3D scene to better understand what we're talking about. This is the end result of rendering a scene with all of the brightness, shadow, and reflection information contained in a single layer. Any 3D scene, on the other hand, is made up of several passes, each of which contains data for only one aspect of the image. Looking at this simple rendering, we can see that it is made up of the objects that make up the scene, the shadows that are generated, the specular lights, and the reflections. All of these informations are joined together in a standard rendering. However, suppose we render an entire sequence, obviously much more complicated than this one, and then discover that the shadows or reflections are too intense. Under normal circumstances, we would have to repeat the rendering by adjusting the transition of reflections and shadow depths to the desired point. However, this is where multipass rendering comes in handy. If the details of the shadows, reflections, specular lights, etc., could be altered separately, we could modify them even after exporting the animated sequence. When performing a multipass rendering, we must first decide which pass to export. The color pass is concerned with the color of the objects. The diffuse pass, on the other hand, in addition to the color, contains information about the shading caused by the light's direction. As you may have noticed, however, there isn't any additional information about shadows, reflections, etc. As a result, we'll also have to include the shadow pass, reflection pass, specular lights, and so on. Each pass, as can be seen, only and solely contains the data pertinent to it. If no information is present, the pixels are either white or black, depending on the type of pass. Returning to our original shadow issue, we can now simply lighten them by acting on the transparency of the shadow layer without having to repeat the entire rendering process. This also applies to any other pass, such as reflections or specular lights. But, in practice, how do we achieve multipass rendering? The first step is to decide which individual pass will be included in the rendering. As you can see, there are numerous passes available, in addition to the ones mentioned previously. In this example, we'll choose all of the passes we'll need to reconstruct the final image by overlapping all of the layers together, much like a virtual sandwich. The color pass, diffuse, specular lights, shadows, ambient occlusion, ambient light, indirect light, and, finally, the reflections, will be activated. The simplest way to export a rendering with multiple passes is to use a format that allows us to include all the layers we've chosen in a single file. This is known as OpenEXR Multilayer. The rendering should be exported as an image sequence. When we load the EXR image sequence into our compositing software, after effects in this case, the video could be completely black and empty. This is due to the fact that the file contains all of the layers that we have exported, so no specific layer is displayed by default. Consequently, we reach the core of the matter. The ability to select which pass to activate enables us to make multiple copies of the video file and select which layer to display for each of them. We can start building our virtual sandwich by layering the various copies of the video on different layers in the following order. Diffuse light, shadows, ambient occlusion, ambient light, reflections, object color, specular lights, and indirect light. It is not required that the layers be in this exact order, you can experiment with other sequences as well.
A small but important thing to note. When doing multipass compositing, we must work in 32-bit mode with linear color space. Let's take a look at each layer individually to see how it looks. Let's start with the diffuse pass, which, as we've seen, contains information about the object's color and light gradations. The shadow pass only contains the shadow information. Everything else in the image is white, as you can see. So, how do we combine this pass with the previous one? In order to accomplish this, we must select the proper layer blending method, in this case, the multiply method. Using this technique, all white areas of the image become transparent, and the underlying image is darkened in proportion to the grayscale in the layer itself. As a result, we've also added shadow information to the diffuse light layer. However, as we can see, the effect is quite strong. As a result, we can adjust the transparency to alter the depth of the shadows. The ambient occlusion pass contains the data for the so-called contact shadows. They are created by the shadows cast by two objects close together. When two objects are close to one another, light does not diffuse in this space. The same as with shadows, we have to set the fusion method to multiply. Ambient light pass resemble ambient occlusion. Indeed, it represents ambient light, which, as we have seen, is lower where two objects come into contact. The difference is in how we merge this layer with those below. The light passes are combined using the screen or add method, while the shadow passes are combined using the multiply method. These methods have the opposite effect. They lighten the underlying image in white areas and proportionally in gray areas, but have no effect on completely black pixels. Again, we must modify the transparency to the desired level in order to regulate the effect. The next step is reflections, which requires the same considerations as the one before. We must set the blend to the screen method and modify the opacity. The same is true for the layer of specular lights. The color layer follows, and it only contains the object's color information and no shading of lighting. It can be used to change the color intensity of objects. Set the blend method to color, and then adjust the desired intensity. Finally, there is the indirect light pass, which represents light reflected from objects. As you can see, this light brightens specific areas of the floor and sphere, based on how the objects reflect one another's light. Again, we use the screen method and adjust the opacity to calibrate the layer's intensity. So, after carefully overlaying and adjusting each pass, we have finally reached the final image. We can now customize each step to our preferences, which is a huge benefit of this technique. For instance, we could add a slight color variation, or make the shadows darker or lighter. We can change the intensity of reflections, specular lights, and other effects. In other words, we don't have to export the entire sequence again in order to make changes to any aspect of our rendering.